Hello and welcome to online worship at Mayville United Methodist Church. My name is Steve Delano and we are so glad that you chose to join us today to celebrate God on this, our Stewardship Commitment Sunday. Advent season begins November 29th. I will be on vacation and Deacon Jill will be leading worship next Sunday as we enter into Advent. Don't forget to collect food for the Mayville Food Pantry with our reverse Advent calendar. You can drop off the food at church on November 30th or December 1st. The women's study group inspired us to do this mission project. Our hymn of praise is Crown Him with Many Crowns. This hymn was written by Matthew Bridges in 1851. Per hymnary.org, this is Bridges' profound declaration that Christ is many things and everything. Christ is King, Servant, Lamb, Shepherd, and we celebrate this all-encompassing, paradoxical nature of our Savior by crowning him the Lord of all. Our accompanist is Jasmine Mahler on piano. Let us sing. And our theme is Jesus wanting us to concentrate on collecting treasures in heaven and not on earth. So Olivia is going to read our scripture verse, Matthew 6, chapter, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21. Go ahead, Liv. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So some people collect things that are really valuable, like I've heard of people collecting coins or stamps or paintings. We collect rocks from where we go sticks. on and sticks also. Yes, we, we have some sticks right here in front of us, actually. Um, so we collect more like nature natural kinds of things to help us remember different vacations that we've gone on. 
Um, so they're not necessarily things that people would break into our house to try to steal. <laughs> I don't think sticks and rocks. Um, but Jesus warns us about collecting treasures on earth because treasures on earth can break. They can get stolen. I had one of my favorite ceramic planters get broken last weekend by, who broke it? Dad. Dad. Dad <laughs> was moving stuff around the living room and he knocked over my planter and it broke. And I was kind of sad at first, um, but then I realized everything that is um, material can be replaced, right? And it's our relationships with people and our uh, love of community and each other that can't be replaced. So collecting treasures on earth is something we all have a tendency to do, but God and Jesus are encouraging us to store up treasures in heaven because those kinds of treasures can't get broken or stolen. Um, they won't wear out. The moths can't eat them, like Olivia mentioned uh, in her in her verse that she read. The, the moths don't eat them. The rust can't get to them. So ways that we can store up treasures in heaven would be helping others. That's a way to store up treasures in heaven. Um, giving of our time and talent to church. That's not something that be, can be taken away. Olivia um, has been making some meals for us in our home, and that is a treasure, I think, and that's something that can't be taken away. You know, it's an act of love, an act of service. So whether you are sharing Jesus with the people you love, or you are spending time um, worshiping out in nature, like we've been doing lately, going on a lot of walks in the beautiful weather, or whether you're helping people, or maybe you're giving of your time and talent uh, to church, those are ways that we can share uh, or store our treasures in heaven. I hope that makes sense today. So would you guys like to pray with me? Dear God, we want our hearts to be in heaven with you. Help us to concentrate on storing up treasures in heaven by doing the things you want us to do, like helping others and uh, giving to our church and other charities that will support causes that we feel strongly about. Um, by spending time in worship, by learning and working and serving and sharing the love of God with people that we love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. See you guys next time. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. God of justice and peace, bring your dazzling light into our hearts and spirits that we might see the glorious opportunities we have to serve you. Help us to see that using our gifts and talents for any activity of service as an act of great privilege and joy. Healing and comforting God, bring your healing hand into our lives and the lives of those that are sick or hurting. Help us to know that no matter what challenges we face, that you are always with us. Merciful and loving God, we know that we do not always live as you intend, that at times we are selfish, boastful, impatient, and unkind. Help us to be selfless, humble, patient, and compassionate in all that we do. We praise you for the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who boldly bids us care for each other and become those who would bring the good news of peace, hope, love, and joy to all. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and, and the, the power, power and, and the, the glory, glory forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. First Peter chapter four, verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Matthew chapter 6 verse 21 For where your treasure is there your heart will also be Two weeks ago Poppy kicked off our stewardship drive and last week I shared my first stewardship message that was focused on the financial aspect of stewardship However, stewardship is about much more than our financial gifts to our church. Our stewardship encompasses joyfully receiving God's gifts, wisely managing these gifts, and sharing these gifts of time, talents, and treasure with others. Today, let's focus on the stewardship of our time and talents. To me, time is a very interesting dimension. We all know that we have 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day. Most of us have plenty of time. Yet sometimes it seems like we don't actually have enough time to do what we want to do or think we need to do. Many of us seem to be busy all of the time, myself included. I do think of myself as somewhat organized. I make lists to keep myself organized. I do this to keep on task, to make sure that I don't miss any of the important things that are on my calendar. Some of you use the calendar function on your phone or your laptop to remind you of upcoming events and activities. We all know that time is valuable. Once we lose it, we never get it back. So how does time fit into being an essential aspect of stewardship? The quick answer is to say that time spent with God and serving others is what it is all about. I really think that it's that simple. Time spent with God in prayer, worship, and Bible study, among other things, is the essential component of building our relationship with God. The things that you can do to spend time serving others is almost unlimited. We can spend time praying for others, worshiping with others, making music with others, studying with others, caring for others, visiting others, administering the church business and facility, and so on. This time spent with God and serving others is stewardship. In our first scripture reading this morning, the Apostle Peter was encouraging house churches across five Roman provinces to use their gifts, their God-given gifts to serve others, to be faithful stewards of God's grace. The Apostle Paul also encouraged Christians to share their gifts in his letter to the Romans from chapter 12, verses 4 through 8. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. 
If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. These gifts that the apostles, Peter and Paul, are talking about are our talents. Maybe you don't think you have any gifts or talents, but most assuredly, you do. These gifts may be calling on others, demonstrating care, listening, encouraging others. Or these gifts might be organizing, leading or participating in activities. These gifts might be facilitating a Bible study or something similar. These gifts might be lending a hand to outreach or mission activities. Or it might be assisting with worship. These gifts could be maintaining our facility. You see the opportunities to use your gifts, your talents are many, almost unlimited. When my wife and I moved to Wisconsin five and a half years ago, we joined a small United Methodist Church in Sheboygan Falls. I quickly became involved in activities primarily for spiritual growth or administrative work within the church. I'm not sure that I recognized that my talents would be useful, but I found as I got involved, I discovered more and more what I could do to serve God and others. I found that building relationships with others and helping others in need was incredibly rewarding and fulfilling. There were two important aspects in this part of my spiritual journey. First, someone in, in this case, my pastor, asked me, challenged me, and encouraged me to step out of my comfort zone. First to be the finance committee chairperson, and then to lead a capital campaign. The second thing, and more, more importantly, was that I was listening for God. I was open to serving God. In my situation, I believe that God acted through my pastor to spur me on. I was not necessarily confident that I could be effective in these roles, but with God's help and encouragement from others, I was willing and able to take on these new opportunities. Listening for God and being willing to say yes are vital elements of stewardship. We are blessed at Mayville United Methodist Church to have many, many congregants that generously share their time and talents with God and with our local church. Thank you for your selfless love and endless giving of your time and talents. I know that things are more challenging during the pandemic, and it may appear that we have fewer opportunities to use our time and talents without in-person activities. We will certainly need to continue to provide opportunities for our congregation in this difficult environment. However, I believe that there are still many opportunities for each of us to serve God and to serve others. I encourage all of us to prayerfully consider how God is calling us to use our time and talents. I encourage us to listen to God, to open our hearts to God. God may speak to us in many different ways. It might be through others as I have experienced, or it might be in 
some entirely different manner. Consider stepping out of your comfort zone. Consider stepping out of your regular routine to serve God and others in new and exciting ways. I encourage you to strive to grow spiritually through worship, through prayer, and participation in Bible study. I encourage you to seek ways to serve others by participating in fellowship activities, mission and outreach activities, serve on a committee, lead a class, or in whatever means God is leading you. As I said last week, my hope is for Mayville United Methodist Church to thrive, not simply survive. In addition, I hope that we can serve God well by caring and serving others in our congregation and in our community. Finally, I want to again thank you for your generosity to our church. Thank you for sharing your time, talents, and treasure. Let us end with our stewardship theme, Jesus' words from Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. Many of you have already sent in your stewardship pledges. Thank you. If you have not yet done so, please do so as soon as you are able to. We truly appreciate your commitment to God and to Mayville United Methodist Church. Please join me in an attitude of prayer for this blessing of our commitments. Generous and loving God, please accept all that we have to offer. We know that this doesn't compare to what you give to us. Please accept our time, talents, and treasure and guide us to speak, do, and act as you intend. Gracious and welcoming God, take my moments and my days, take my hands and my feet, Take my voice, take my silver and my gold, take my heart, so that we might be more like our Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name, amen. Our hymn of commitment is Take My Life and Let It Be. This is my favorite stewardship hymn. It was written by Francis Haverhall in 1874 and is of total consecration to Christ. Let us sing.
you for worshiping with us today. I'm truly grateful to be your pastor, and I feel truly blessed to be in ministry with you. I hope that you all have a blessed Thanksgiving. Please receive the benediction. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.